So you just finished building your PC. Congratulations, but you're not done yet. Now it's time to optimize that sweet rig. So today, we're gonna show you what to do after you build your PC. Ready? Let's get to it. And if you're just starting out your build, we have some amazing Intel Core Ultra 7 265K CPU and Z890 motherboard combos in the link below or by going to newegg.com forward slash Intel Spring Upgrade. Not only can you save up to $100 when you combo these high performance components, but you also receive Star Wars Outlaws Gold Edition and the Intel Builders Bundle Gift, Civilization 7 and Assassin's Creed shadows for free. First up, one of the most common mistakes is to plug your monitor into the wrong port on your PC. You want to make sure you connect your monitor to the GPU itself, not to the motherboard. The motherboard port is only for integrated graphics on the CPU. Now for the Windows installation. We highly recommend buying a Windows USB drive. Once you boot your PC with the drive inserted in the back of your PC, you'll be launched right into the Windows setup. Since there will have been Windows updates since your Windows USB drive was manufactured, go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi, then navigate to settings, then Windows update at the bottom. Now, update. This can, uh, this can take a while. Next is the BIOS. This step is entirely optional, but you may want to update your BIOS if you have a motherboard with an older BIOS preloaded that doesn't give you the full performance of your Intel CPU. To access the BIOS, restart your PC and mash the delete key and the BIOS screen will appear. Look for the generation of your BIOS and write it down. Once you have your current BIOS version written down, go to Windows and check online for your motherboard and its BIOS. If you find that there are more recent BIOS versions, especially those that might offer increased performance, then you'll want to follow these steps to update your BIOS. To update the BIOS first, you'll need a fresh flash drive. Step two, download the new BIOS update from the motherboard manufacturer for your exact motherboard model. Step three, insert the flash drive into the BIOS USB port on the back of your motherboard, if it has one. If not, check with your motherboard user manual for the right port. Step four, format your flash drive to FAT32 within Windows. This can be done by right-clicking on the drive and then selecting Format. Step five, put the new BIOS on your fresh flash drive. Step six, reboot your computer and access the BIOS. Step seven, navigate to the BIOS update area in the BIOS. You might need to select something like advanced mode to find it. Step eight, back up your current BIOS using the UEFI tool in the BIOS. It'll back up to the flash drive, which you can then use if you ever want to revert to a previous version. Step nine, use the same update tool to update to your new BIOS. The PC will then update your BIOS. Step 10, do not turn off your PC. This is super important because if your PC loses power, it could permanently damage your motherboard. Step 11, once the BIOS is upgraded, restart your PC and you're done. You can check to see if you have the new BIOS either in the BIOS itself or by checking system information on your PC. Now, we're getting to overclocking. If you have an Intel CPU with a K in the name, then your CPU is unlocked and you can overclock. So if you purchased a 265K or 285K Intel Core Ultra CPU, you wanna make sure that you have a Z890 motherboard. The Z is an indicator that your motherboard will be able to overclock your CPU. The good news is that modern Intel CPUs naturally overclock themselves to match your basic system performance, but there's more performance to be had if you wanna take your CPU to the next level and you have ample cooling to handle all that extra power. Now, when people talk about overclocking, there are really two types, automatic software-based overclocking and the fully manual hardcore overclock. Fully manual overclocking is more complex and intricate than we wanna get into in this video, so we're gonna focus on the software-based overclock. And that's gonna be the best choice for most people. You can access your motherboard's overclocking features either through the BIOS 
or through the motherboard software that you would download from the manufacturer's website. This software is worth downloading for its additional features, though most people like overclocking just through the BIOS. Now, each motherboard manufacturer has different names for their auto overclocking software, so check with the user manual before diving in. Once there, you'll be able to select the overclocking program that will run your system through numerous stress tests and reboots in order to find the absolute max performance that your system can handle. If you experience system shutdowns during normal usage, you can always go back into the BIOS and select a different mode or turn off overclock entirely. These shutdowns might happen if your cooling isn't able to handle the additional power running through your CPU. Now we reach how to overclock your RAM which sounds more difficult than it really is. If you bought fancy RAM with higher speeds, which is a lot of the RAM that's available on the market right now, then it's made to reach those higher speeds with a simple setting switch. This setting is called XMP. And the reason it's off by default is for maximum memory compatibility. Since you're technically overclocking your RAM, you're going beyond the basic specs for the motherboard. You'll almost never have an issue with enabling it, but if you do run into system issues, you can easily revert back to the basic setting. To enable XMP, all you have to do is go back into your BIOS by hitting the delete key at startup and navigate to the memory overclocking area. Again, each motherboard manufacturer is different, so it's best to look up your specific motherboard to see where the setting is located. In ours, we have to go to the overclocking menu and then scroll down to DRAM settings. Then you'll see a button or a drop down that says XMP disabled or XMP auto or XMP disabled. And then you're just gonna click on that and select enabled. Restart your PC and you're done. You're probably wondering about overclocking your GPU. The great news is that your GPU will naturally boost to the highest frequency that it can handle while remaining stable. You can manually adjust GPU settings, but this is an advanced feature that the vast majority of people will not want to attempt. The real way to get the best performance out of your GPU and total system is to have excellent case cooling, which takes us to our next section. One of the most critical performance steps you'll want to perform is to optimize your case and CPU fans. GPU and power supply fans work automatically, but case and CPU fans are all controlled directly by the motherboard. When you built your PC, you'll have noticed fan headers with labels like CPU fan and system fan one and so forth. These labels will be useful for identifying where the fans are located for the motherboard software to optimize your performance. When adjusting and tuning your fans, you'll have a couple options. You can either do it manually by selecting each fan or group of fans and setting fan speeds, or you can use the smart tuning features found in the BIOS or the desktop software. The included software with the motherboard is a great tool for testing your system and applying fan profiles. You'll first want to label each fan within the software. For example, you would select system fan one to be your front case fan, or your CPU fan should be connected to the fans on on your CPU cooler. When using the auto tuner, the software will run through several cycles to test your system's heat as well as your fan speeds and adjust them accordingly. Now, you'll want to optimize your desktop software for gaming. The most basic step is to make sure your system and drivers are all up to date. You'll need to download your GPU software and run through the updates to get the most performance out of your GPU, as well as special tweaks tailored for a number of games. Windows incorporates a gaming mode that is typically on by default. This detects when you're playing a game and adjusts the software for the best performance. You can check to make sure that gaming mode is enabled by going into your settings, finding gaming on the left hand side, and navigating to game mode. You can also disable Windows notifications to skip the promotional content in the background. Additionally, configure your game launchers like Steam to only open when you want them to, not at system startup. This keeps all those background tasks to a minimum. Finally, 
don't install antivirus or other software that runs in the background. Windows includes a strong antivirus already, and these programs can suck up performance. You want your PC as clean and pure as possible. That's it! Now you have a fully optimized PC that will get you the most performance your system can provide. Remember to check out Newegg.com forward slash Intel Spring Upgrade in the description to get a great deal on an Intel Core Ultra 7 265K CPU and Z890 motherboard combo. With savings up to $100, plus Star Wars Outlaws Gold Edition and the Intel Builders Bundle Gift, Civilization 7 and Assassin's Creed Shadows absolutely free! Tell us about your rig in the comments. Don't forget to follow Newegg on all your social media platforms so you don't miss more helpful content like this. I'm Ben Tibbles, and this is Newegg.